Good evening, everyone. I hope um, everyone is very comfortable at home. Um, my name is Bianca. I'm one of the co-founders of Chiba Africa and Chiba Cannabis Academy. And I would like to welcome you all to this um, amazing webinar, um, Introduction to Cannabis. I'm super, super um, amped that we have an all-female um, panel here. And um, I'm really looking forward to all the um, insight that every single um, panelist has to share with us this evening. I want to thank our panelists for, for um, making up their time. And um, I want to thank our sponsors for all the prizes. Um, good luck to all the attendees. Um, I, hope, I hope you win. Um, and I look forward to a super informative hour um, and a, a, a great experience tonight. Um, I'll hand over to our host, um, Noxie. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Noxie. Um, I am a cannabis influencer, cannabis content creator, and I'm super excited to be here today. Warm welcome to everyone. We have some amazing, amazing women in the cannabis industry today. And like Bianca said, it's always a pleasure to see other women who are actually in this space, taking up space, and just doing some amazing, amazing work. So I'm gonna ask the panel, my beautiful panel of ladies, to introduce themselves. I wanna start with Carmen. Hi tell everyone. Tell us who you are <laughs> and tell us your role also in, in the kind of space. So good evening everyone and welcome. My name is Carmen James and I'm a medical doctor and integrative um, medical practitioner and health coach. And my role in the cannabis space is to really educate and empower people around how they can use cannabis as medicine. So that's me. Awesome. Dominique. Hi, good evening, beautiful ladies and everyone that tuned in. I'm Dominique Manel. I'm a researcher. I've been researching cannabis since 2016. And I'm overwhelmed with uh, science and, and uh, studies out there. And I know that I am scratching the surface. So um, I do offer, as a consultant, I offer training and education as well. Um, but I'm also a networker and a networker in the sense of bringing research and development to South Africa so that we can also do our own scientific research in order to build the industry successfully. And I'm always thinking about how cannabis can be inclusive in a way that it does include the full population. So with my networking and research and development, I'm happy to say that I've also brought some funds in from abroad for research in South Africa. And this is um, sort of the space I'm moving in at the moment. Awesome. Great work. Uh, Kelly? Well, hi, I'm Kelly McHugh. And uh, in 2012, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Sorry, am I the only one who's, who's losing Kelly? No, no you're not. So she's lost that I would if I did. She's can you hear there me now? She's back. She's back. Apologies, guys. Technological issues. Oh, you know how it is. <laughs> sorry. Um, so, in, uh, so anyway, I healed myself using uh, my own homemade cannabis oil. And I went on to write a book, um, At Home with Cannabis, which really aims just to empower people to be able to make their own cannabis products and to be able to heal themselves confidently using cannabis um, to improve their quality of life. So that's me. So that's <laughs> Kelly. And last but not least, Jackie. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining this evening. My name is Jackie Ramage. I'm a pharmacist. Um, I'm uh, early adopter of the cannabis industry. I am involved in the uh, growing and cultivation space as well as the uh, cannabis regulatory space at the moment. Um, so I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited to be representing women. Um, I spoke a bit, little bit about women in cannabis for another communications agency um, and uh, have to give some kudos to my daughter this evening. She's been watching during lockdown makeup tutorials. So she did my makeup for this evening so um, <laughs> I'm really glad to have everyone here and I'm happy to be imparting knowledge um, 
been involved with uh, Trenton and his amazing vision for a long time. And I'm really, really happy to be involved and uh, in the education and the, the cannabis empowerment space in the, the right way at the right time uh, to the right people. So thank you for having me and thank you for your amazing initiatives. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all the ladies who are here today. Um, so today we're talking about an introduction to cannabis. So when you hear that, you already know we're talking about the basics. Um, if you are somebody who's already learned in the, in the cannabis plant and you know a lot, um, like Dominique said, I think, you can never know too much. You're still scraping the surface. So there's, there's always going to be something that you're going to walk away with today. Something new, something you didn't know. There are some very interesting questions here that I'm, I'm waiting for the answers to. And I thought I knew a lot. So yeah, we have some prizes as well, as you know. Um, Amy is going to be talking about the prizes and there will be a prize announcement in the middle of the show. I'll announce it when it's time for it. And we're going to have one at the end as well. So you guys stay and don't leave. <laughs> um, so let me talk about the prizes. Um, there is Chiba Africa 450 milligram CBD tincture. We have Earthshine CBD snack pack. And in the snack pack is Nutri Crisps, Nutri Sticks, and Super Hot Cacao. I think that's how you say it, because it doesn't say cocoa. It's not the, mm -hmm. I don't think it's the same thing. <laughs> and then we have Foria Intimacy CBD Lubricant, Sexy Time. And then we have a 750 Rand Emporium voucher. And also we have an amazing book by Kelly that's autographed at home with cannabis. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. Thank you for the amazing prizes. So the duration of the session is going to be around an hour and we're gonna factor in an extra 10 minutes for questions. I'm gonna ask my panelists to please keep it as concise as possible. I know you've got a lot to say, but in the interest of time, can we? You know, <laughs> and also, um, I'm ideally I'm depending on you ladies to actually help me keep within time. We're also going to have questions at the end, so feel free to. I think we've already got the questions already from some of you guys. Um, I'm sure you can also maybe pop a message if you feel like you have something that you need to ask. Amy's also going to be facilitating the question session for us, but also, we're going to have questions at the end end of our presentations. So I'm going to hand over to Jackie. Jackie is our first speaker today and she'll be taking us through the plant. So let's talk about the plant. Hi, thank you, Noxy. Um, so I started this, uh, this really great journey, very much like one of our other panelists. Uh, in fact, it's a really good time. Yesterday was a four, the four year mark of my diagnosis with breast cancer. And I'm very, very happy to be sitting here alive and discussing and chatting with you. Um, knowledge is a blessing. Knowledge is a blessing and a curse. And during that, I thought at some point there was a curse, but um, it's led me along to to this path to professionally and and personally address uh, ca cannabis in South Africa. So, what is cannabis? Very very short and succinct. We we all talk about, and that's why I started my analogy with cannabis uh, with with cancer and cannabis is that. When, when somebody says cancer, you see this big, oh my goodness, but there's a lot under the umbrella of cancer. So you, when you say cancer, oh my goodness, what cancer do you have? Are you going to die? Cannabis is, is very much the same thing. There's this big umbrella of cannabis that when you mention it, there's very varying responses from oohs and ahs to, oh my goodnesses, to block your children's ears. But under this umbrella of cannabis, there is so, such a wide array of, of fact and science that we cannot ignore it. So under this big umbrella of cannabis, we have three, with the want of a better description, species of cannabis, which is indica, sativa, and ruderalis. And we joked the other night and the other day about uh, poor old ruderalis sitting in the corner that somebody is taking, a, taking note of right now and is discussing. But for this point, um, we have the two strains that, that people discuss is indica and sativa. Indica is your shorter and your bushy plant and sativa is your longer and your leaner plant. And I like to think of it very much about the energy that it gives in terms of the effect 
when people dis discuss how they've ingested or how they've used the sativa or the indica strains. So sativa is your mind dominant, it's your more psychoactive, it's more sociable. Um, and you can see it by it very much in the leaves, and that's how I like to often remember it, is they're long and they lean because it gives you energy. So the longer and the leaner leaves, they're working harder, they're spending more energy, and they're extending a lot more of their, their time. So they're, they're for want of a better, not body shaming, a thinner description of our cannabis plant. <laughs> However, our indica is our more sort of comfy winter guy, uh, or girl, in fact, sorry, none of them are guys. They're all girls. The ones that we want, at least, are the girls. Um, yes. And that's why this woman in cannabis is, is, is so great, um, because they're all moms and they're all females, right? And they give the best plants and, and the, best, uh, the best product. Our indica is our, is our more wintry, as I said, our more comfort hibernating uh, uh, genus or species. Um, the, the leaves are shorter. The, the plants are shorter. They're bushier. And that, that response is the same as in the plant. It's more relaxing, it's more hibernating, it's more body dominant. Those are more responsible for the couch lock effect that some cannabis gives. It also reduces nausea, increases appetite. And as Dr. Carmen will be chatting about later, in terms of the applications of these products is where we look at them clinically and where we're looking at a lot of uh, the discovery and the science uh, in, in cannabis. Incidentally, I don't know if any of you've seen, but uh, there's been a big project, project by the CIDCWC that was announced this week that have uh, procured 15 hectares of Simondium in Pal for research and development. So that's an amazing and exciting um, forward progress in terms of South Africa and cannabis. Um, on that note, it reminds me, I, I will need to unfortunately leave this, um, this platform in order to discuss uh, an internal uh, industry issue. So I will be uh, happy to field questions later via Chiba and any of the other panelists. So I am sorry, I have to really uh, chat and go. No Thank problem, you. Jackie. No problem. Thank you so much for giving us your time. I know you're a very busy lady and we already knew that she was going to leave us. Um, thank you so much for that. I, I, I don't know if you want to add anything or are you good? Yeah, so I just quickly about the flower, um, again, about, yeah. about women in cannabis. I think it's, it's really uh, pertinent right now to, to uh, discuss the fact that we're, we're referring to the greatness of the plant being the moms and the female plant. Um, and this is essentially where we look to, what the essence of the cannabis is that we look to, is, is in the buds and in the flower. Uh, and in when the, the plant goes into, from a cultivation standpoint, when the plant goes into a flowering state, it uh, pr produces what we call trichomes and terpenes. It's those nice crystally, every woman's best friend is supposedly a diamond. And those are the diamonds of the plant, uh, the diamonds of the flower that we see when it is active, when it is ready to be harvested. And uh, that, that's a different dark hole that we can go down and talking about cultivation. Um, but the, what is in, it contained in those trichomes and those diamonds of the plant is what we call the cannabinoids and the terpenes of the plant. The cannabinoids are the ones we talk about, THC and CBD. THC is your tetrahydrocannabiol, and that is your psychoactive portion of the plant. And your CBD is your cannabidiol, which is your non-psychoactive. So when we speak about it, uh, Dr. Carmen will be alluding to it a lot more in terms of the responses in the body and the endocannabinoid system. This is where we find the essence of cannabis, how it, how it interacts with our body and what it does in our body. We then go one little layer below that umbrella effect of the terpenes. So as the cannabinoids have an effect, whether it be psychoactive in the brain or whether it be non-psychoactive in the body, those terpenes can then be distilled both um, logically in terms of a scientific process, as well as practically down into their individual terpenes. And each individual terpene has its own action. It has an, an action, a, a positive action in the body, or it has a response or a retrograde, retrograde inhibition response in the body. So basically, you have a, a basic effect, and there are terpenes and cannabinoids in the body that then have the opposite effect as well in order to balance. And the cannabis plant, that's why it's so amazing, is because it can balance. The homeostasis within the body is already there in our system. As you know, there are various methods of consumption. The primary and the most, uh, most publicized 
and the most uh, I would I would suppose contentious is the inhalation, which is uh, mostly smoking, vaping. But in terms of the science of cannabis, we've gone really, really far and we've got, we've come to edibles, we've come to tinctures, we've come to extracts, we've come to um, whole cooking shows on cannabis. So in short, the, the most amazing uh, industry is here. It's exciting. It's good to be part of it. Um, it's really great to be in the inception stages of it. And uh, I really wish everybody all the best. And if you want any more information we're, we've got courses with chiba um and uh, yeah we're happy to discuss any any questions so thank you for your short or albeit really really quick time noxy thank you very much for hosting i'm sorry i have to run um but uh yeah just you know go for it and not be careful what you wish for embrace what you wish for thank you mm -hmm. have a lovely Love evening that. everyone I've never heard that that's amazing <laughs> thank you jackie <laughs> Thank you for taking us through the plant. Um, thank you guys for your comments. I see them. We, we all see them, I think. We're reading them. We love the interaction. And we're on the move on right now to Dr. Carmen, who's going to tell us about cannabis and the body. Good evening once again, everyone. So this is fantastic. And thank you so much, Jackie, for going through this incredible plant, which as Dominique earlier suggested, mm -hmm. that we are only scratching the surface. It's so like incredible to know that there's so much that we actually don't know. And one thing that we didn't know about for a very long time is this endocannabinoid system that we have in all of our bodies. In fact, it's found in all of our bodies, in the bodies of humans, in all animals except insects. And this is a really fascinating system that we have in our bodies that I didn't learn anything about in medical school. In fact, it's not taught in medical schools, which is bizarre to me because this endocannabinoid system has been likened to our body's very own supercomputer. If you can think about all the systems that you have in your body, right? So the ones you know, your nervous system, your respiratory system, your cardiovascular system, right? So your heart and your blood vessels, your immune system, all of the systems that you know of in your body are basically run and controlled by what's called the endocannabinoid system. And this is a fascinating system that kind of uh, snakes in between and interlaces and intermixes in between all our different body systems. And as Jackie mentioned just now, the role of the endocannabinoid system is to provide balance or what we call homeostasis in our body. So if you think about if your blood pressure is too high, you're going to have a problem, right? If your blood pressure is too low, you're going to have a problem as well. But a normal blood pressure is really where we want you to be at. And that's what's called homeostasis or balance. And so this powerful system inside all of our bodies is responsible for ensuring that we are maintained in balance. Now, this is fascinating. And the system really works like a lock and key mechanism. So if you were to think about all over your body, you've got all these locks and something called endocannabinoids, which are basically the cannabinoids that we produce inside our bodies, really fit in and lock into the locks that exist within the endocannabinoid system. So you have this, um, these receptors, which are like the locks and the keys, which are the endocannabinoids that fit into those locks and cause certain reactions to take place. And what's fascinating about that is that we mentioned THC and CBD, for example, is that yeah. the mirror image of THC in our bodies is something called anandamide. Some of you may be familiar with what's called the runner's high. And that's thought to be as a result of endorphins, but also significantly as a result of anandamide production inside our body. And if we look at CBD, which we just mentioned now in the cannabis plant as well, there's another mirror image that occurs inside our own bodies called 2AG. And so it's fascinating how we actually produce our own endocannabinoids and how they interact with our body's endocannabinoid system to strike a balance. So if we move on to this, the, the next slide, as I mentioned, the system works as a lock and key um, mechanism. We, we, and if you think about the way the system is intricately interwoven into our other body systems, you can begin to understand how the cannabis plant can have so many different applications. 
For example, we mentioned that in some instances, some cannabinoids can reduce things like nausea, for example, but it's also been powerfully shown to help to tone and soothe the nervous system. So cannabis has also been shown to be very helpful in certain movement conditions, for example, Parkinson's. It's also been shown to be helpful in certain mood disorders as well. So depression and anxiety, um, especially patients with cancers, certain cancers, um, cannabis has really been shown to not only reduce the effect that the cancer has in the body, but it also helps to stabilize and boost the immune system so that the immune system can function better. And also some applications would include things like helping to reduce nausea and vomiting as a result of therapies like chemotherapy, for example. Now, there are a number of different receptors in the endocannabinoid system, but the ones that are most studied are the CB1 and CB2 receptors. Predominantly, the CB1 receptors are found in the brain and the spinal cord along the central nervous system. And predominantly, the CB2 receptors are found in the periphery, so in other areas of the body. But really these interactions in the endocannabinoid system will help to maintain balance or homeostasis throughout our body. So if you think about something, for example, like your hormones, right? Your hormones fluctuate, they're changing all the time, especially when we're talking about women and women's health. This is a You're very fascinating me. topic, right? <laughs> because, because the endocannabinoid system, that's such an intricate um, uh, flux and flow of hormones that needs to be taking place. The endocannabinoid system also helps to maintain balance in those areas. And so the applications for cannabis inside the body and how we can use it to maintain balance and homeostasis within our bodies is really fascinating stuff. I hope that that sheds some light on, on this powerful system. So much light, so much light. Um, I want to actually thank you, Dr. Carmen, for that. And also I want us to move on to a free-flowing discussion now. Mm -hmm. I want us to bust, bust some myths, answer some questions. Um, we've got so many things that we hear in the streets um, that we read in some so-called knowledgeable articles, and then you find that some of the information is not actually factual or true. So we have heard all of the myths in, 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 in life about cannabis, from it gives you schizophrenia, memory loss, gateway drug. I want us to address some of those myths. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the schizophrenia. Let's start there. Um, this is open to anyone who wants to, to, to answer. Just raise your hand. Um, I'm opening up the floor to you guys. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what, do you, what do you think or what do you know? Is it true? Can cannabis really give you schizophrenia and some mental disorders? Well, I, I actually wrote an article to debunk that. And what I have discovered was that, um, that one is born with schizophrenia. It's not necessarily something that, that can be caused by cannabis, but um, people are pre, who are predisposed to schizophrenia, cannabis can of course trigger it, but it's definitely not a cause from... Oh. It's not a cause. So I just wanted to ask you, what kind of person would be born with schizophrenia? Is it something that is hereditary or? Well, that answer I can't give, unfortunately. Um, I'm not really qualified to, to say that. But when I, what I have discovered was that it is, it's, it's, you're rather born with it, but it's, in other words, it's not really caused by cannabis. It can maybe just trigger the symptoms or if people are predisposed to it may not do well with it, even though there are studies showing that people suffering from schizophrenia can make use um, of the medicine, cannabis, so not recreational, but medicine using CBD. Um, so there are clinical trials that's being done on that, but I think it was just one of those last attempts to, to, to not get cannabis legalized because it was something that kind of popped up, you know, out of nowhere, I almost want to say. We always used to know about the gateway drug and it was never really, the schizophrenia was never really highlighted. And now as legalization became worldwide, this became more coming more to the surface. Um, so that's, that's all I know um, about the schizophrenia um, element that it, and also I think we also need to understand that 
cannabis is not for everyone. There will be people who do not do well with the medicine or in a recreational space. So if, if you are predisposed and maybe suffer from it, perhaps it's just not for you. I think they also, uh, uh, actually like what, sorry, sorry, Noxie. Oh, no, <laughs> I just wanted to dovetail on, on what Dominique was saying there, which is excellent. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, when we're speaking about psychiatric uh, conditions, uh, things that, you know, what causes it? Is it genetic? I think that this is a topic that is still mm -hmm. uncertain. The number of different things that could perhaps predispose somebody to developing a psychiatric condition. You mentioned genetics, but I mean, a number of other things, for example, your environment, any toxins, yeah. traumatic experiences in childhood. Even diet. Diet. You know, it's, 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 there's so many different components that it's difficult to pinpoint exactly. But what we also know is that THC in, in patients who are diagnosed with schizophrenia, THC specifically is not um, advised That's for cool. usage. So as you mentioned, um, CBD, perfectly fine, but THC specifically for those with psychosis and, yeah, and, and schizophrenia is a no-no. Yeah. I want to address another myth before I move on to our first prize giving. So Amy, get ready. <laughs> Um, let's talk about stoners are uh, lazy. Let's talk about this loss of motivation um, mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Do you have anything to say on that? Is Kelly there? No. Oh no, I thought she was there the whole time. Hmm. Oh. Anyway, we'll try and get Kelly back. Um, loss of motivation. Stoners are lazy. Let's talk. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think this is the whole thing about having to understand that cannabis have different impacts on different people and different bodies. Cannabis have a different impact on men, then on mm. women, then on children, mm. then on seniors. Um, so age matters in this case. Um, also on your furry friends. And I think... Um, from observation, I have experienced and seen people, the only thing they can think of is the next joint. And I think that with this discussion that we're having, yes, it is relevant in terms of the myths busting, but from a medical perspective, I'm not quite sure if it's really relevant because that's almost more recreational space when it comes 100%. to only smoking and being the slob, not wanting to, 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 to do anything. But I do have something interesting in terms of myths busting, and this is the dependency that, um, that, that there's also this myth that cannabis is, you know, have dependency that people can't be without it. And mm. um, what I've discovered, which was quite interesting, that um, those that reported dependency is only about 9% of people using it. But what's interesting is it is a very low profile from dependency when you compare it with other substances. And caffeine, our coffee, is with 7%. So this is just to bring it into perspective in terms of dependency. Yes, people get dependent, but hey, your coffee is just a notch below that. So in terms of the bigger space, in terms of substance dependency, um, cannabis profile is, is really, really low. And that so, myth needs to be busted completely. <laughs> can I just add something there? Um, that 9% that you speak about of dependency, I read a report a little while ago that actually mentioned that that was, um, they came up with that figure before they started controlling for the use of tobacco in joints. So in actual actuality, if you start controlling for that as well, because it's tobacco being extremely addictive, um, when you take the tobacco out of the joints, um, the addiction rate is even lower than that, actually. Yeah. That makes sense because, um, yeah, tobacco is highly addictive. That's why people can't really seem to let go of it. Mm. Yeah, I think that um, with regards to the question about, you know, stoners being <laughs> lazy, I think, uh, I think Jackie mentioned earlier about how cannabis affects your body differently. And I think that, you know, for so many people, um, using cannabis, even recreationally, actually sparks creativity within them. And 
it's actually energizing for them. And so I think that, you know, that's, that is a blanket statement. It is a misconception. And I think that it, it takes away from the potential, you know, benefits creatively and energetically that some people may experience from using the substance as well. So it's kind of a one-sided um, mm -hmm. <laughs> approach to it. <laughs> Yeah, and it comes with responsibility at the same time, just like everything else that you would use comes with a set of responsibility that you need to take. And, um, but yes, um, there, there is maybe a layer of truth in it, but it's definitely not a reason not to consider it as a medicine. And with all the, the different strains, which are now called chemo bars, which is really specific to the chemical component of the particular strain that you can use for very targeted diseases or, or, or ailments or, or moods. Um, if, if, if that's what you want to avoid, then obviously try to get the chemo bar or the strain that's rather uplifting, more energizing with the right terpene uh, profile to give you that extra um, heightened or creativity um, spark um, and keep and keep that other bud for when you want to go to sleep instead. <laughs> so really um, use your, your, your medicine creatively for, for your own personal needs because it's, it's, it's a patient driven industry and, um, and, and, and it comes with trial and error uh, at the same time, you know, you might just end up with the butt that makes you sleepy. Then make a note, have a journal, say what it is, keep track, and then move on and see if you can then find the one that gives you that sweet spot for what you require uh, personally. Mm. Wow, that's great. Can I also just say, though, when it comes to the whole idea that cannabis makes you uh, demotivated and stuff. I think people also don't really take into account that rest is a very important factor in our very, very busy lives. And I do think that sometimes we are made to feel tired on purpose and we're made to be demotivated because our body, we're actually being put more in touch with our bodies and we suddenly feel when we relax and we let go of all of that stress, mm. we suddenly feel what we need to feel. And so I'm not saying you should smoke it and or you know sleep all the time. I am saying that that whole uh, sort of stereotype of the the lazy stoner um, it kind of masks I think the medicinal um, aspect of that quality of cannabis. Also, as you were saying, it really depends on what strain you're using and how you're using it and what time of day you're using. It. Yeah. Yeah, completely. But also, I mean, I just want to check, can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Because I lost connection for a bit. Um, so yeah. when I say the time that you take, for example, I mean, you smoke it, obviously that's going to give you quite a, a, a high feeling, either physical or mental. If you're taking a pink or something, if you're microdosing, you can still, some, you know, still get those benefits without actually getting feeling tired or um, need to sleep or feeling demotivated. In fact, depending on the picture, it should be quite energized. Mm -hmm. Guys, can you see me and hear me? Hear I'm me? having connection issues. Yeah, we I can, can see hear you and see you, Knox. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> Amy, are you ready with the prizes? We're doing our first ready. prize giveaway. Mm -hmm. Ready, Lovely. yeah. Really Some good old. stuff. So the, the prize giving is a random selection, guys. So Amy, I'm going to hand it over to you. Yay, prize giving. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Um, so the first prize goes to, first of all, um, before I carry on, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I just want to say yeah. that yeah. Uh, before we carry on with the prize giving, I just want to let you know that you need to be in South Africa unfortunately, um, just because of a postage and all of that, you need to be in South Africa to, in order to win a prize. So the people that I've selected are specifically in South Africa. Okay, so don't feel bad if you are all over the world and you can't get your prize, <laughs> or, or you think that we haven't selected you because you are not in this country. So our first winner is Vivid Chipura. Vivid Chipura wins 
<laughs> Yay! Um, Vivid Chipura wins a Chiba Africa oil, uh, CBD oil tincture, 450 milligrams full, full spectrum. Very excited for you, Vivid. And we will send that to you as soon as possible. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yay, well done. <laughs> yeah, and the so second we prize. Gonna, we are going to get your details. Oh, sorry, is there another prize? Oh! Yes, there's another prize. There's two prizes. Keep Not coming. for the same person, yeah, for another person. Yeah, Vivid, he just won. He just sent a. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? I actually yeah, didn't see that. <laughs> Thank funny. you. I didn't. I, I, <laughs> I didn't see. Well done, Vivid. Uh, did I just win? Yes, you did. Thanks. Awesome. Um, and the next prize. I hope this person can also hear and see that they are winning right now because you never know. The next person is Yusri Penali, and you, Yusri, win a. Um, intimate, oh, sorry, 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 sorry about that. Um, a Foria Intimate Lubricant, a CBD Intimate Lubricant. This is very sexy. I hope you're excited and I hope you can <laughs> see it. <laughs> Thank wow, you. Chikabow, and wow. Chikabow, wow. <laughs> I love this favorite prize giving. <laughs> cool, awesome. Thank you, Noxy. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. I want to do one more myth bust before we move on to some questions. Let's talk about, I think we already touched on this, but let's talk about smoking and cancer. Um, is there a direct correlation between being a cannabis smoker and cancer? <laughs> Can I answer that then? Um, there's not a lot of um, evidence to support that. In the early days, again, when they were not controlling for the use of tobacco, there was evidence to suggest that maybe um, cannabis was harmful. However, recently, again, they've started now controlling for that. Um, they found that um, what's it, cannabis smokers might be more susceptible to bronchitis, but other than that, apparently our lungs are very healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen anything, uh, you know, in the research and that I haven't come across anything that directly links uh, using cannabis alone, smoking cannabis alone to, to any cancers. Um, but I think that when it comes to, you know, um, the way cannabis impacts and affects your body is going to be different from person to person. And there are some things to consider when you're smoking cannabis. Um, and I think from a medical, medicinal point of view, it's not the ideal method of um, administering um, cannabis. It's, I suppose, can be debated um, because there are a number of other things that are happening when you burn plant material. However, mm. um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think that there's any concrete evidence to show uh, a, a direct link between cannabis usage and and uh, cancers. There may be a correlation, so or or some kind of um, incidental finding. But as far as drawing a direct conclusion that smoking cannabis is um, is directly linked to cancer, I'm not aware that anything exists at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I Thank can you. also just add to that. That's also some research that I looked into once upon a time, um, which I probably have to look up again. But from what I remember, that if you would smoke, um, it's it's not the cannabinoids. It's it's the, when you burn it. It's the actual tar, um, like you say, the plant. When you when you burn it, that is maybe can be harmful to 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 your lungs, and therefore vaping would be a much better way to if you choose to smoke because it gives you immediate relief or immediate effects uh, versus eating it, for example, and you choose to smoke, then rather vaporizing it as it will only really heat, only warm up the flower, mm. and not burn it. Mm. And so the correlation that Dr. Carmen pointed out is, is, is what I remember more about the, 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 that actual burn that's, that's causing the harm, but not the cannabinoids, not the cannabis uh, as such. So it's, it's really about how you administer it as well. I also want to talk about cannabis and health. Um, 
what are some of the health benefits of, of cannabis that we can share with everybody who's watching today? We've heard long lists. So are the long lists really true? <laughs> well, I think it's important, like we were talking earlier, you know, we're talking about plant medicine. It's very different from if you're taking a pill, for example, you know, you, you're taking a, a, a pill that's been created in a laboratory that's been isolated and you know exactly, you know, what your targets are and that kind of thing. It's very different from using plant medicine. And, you know, you've got hundreds of cannabinoids and then you've got terpenes and you've got flavonoids and you've got, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. And there's so much variation within that. That is the reason why there appears to be this never ending list of benefits of cannabis. Um, so I think that's an important thing to kind of keep in mind. But certainly what we know that we can use, especially CBD, because um, I think we have to be careful about how we um, promote um, things, especially, you know, in the current climate um, of with, with, you know, legalization and that type of thing. Um, but it's certainly when it comes to um, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, it's been shown to be very powerful. It really helps to reduce and manage stress. Um, nausea, it may be associated with reduced um, nausea and vomiting. Definitely pain is another uh, target as well. So people often find relief with not only applying uh, cannabis products directly to points of pain, but also ingesting it to reduce inflammation in the body, which also reduces pain. It can be used in, in um, you know, things like uh, chronic inflammation. So any inflammatory condition, things like psoriasis, arthritis, for example, anything that promotes inflammation inside your body, CBD can be helpful to calm and soothe um, that as well. And then also importantly in epilepsy, I think that that's probably one of the most profound things that we know of with yeah. regards to CBD oil in particular. You know, we know, we know of uh, Charlotte's Web and how, um, and how this CBD has been shown in some instances to be the only thing that works in seizure disorders, Dravet syndrome, for example. And so, yeah, even including in autism, I saw there was a question about autism earlier, but definitely I think that there is a lot of, there are a lot of applications and the reason for that is because this is plant medicine. And if we go back to the endocannabinoid system and the fact that it's diffused through your whole body, we get to make sense why we see so many benefits with, with mm -hmm. cannabis plant. Mm -hmm. 100%. So if I'm getting you right, Dr. Carmen, you are saying mm -hmm. that yeah. plant is different from actual pharmaceutical medication because pharmaceutical medication is created specifically for one thing, for one specific area, whereas a plant has endless limitations. No, no, no limitations, sorry. Endless possibilities, yeah, endless no limitations. possibilities, yeah. It's not finite. We haven't taken an extract out of, and this is why we, when we were talking about, you know, full spectrum, and that's important because full spectrum gives you the entire full spectrum of the plant. And that means that, you know, different terpene profiles are going to affect your body differently, for example. Um, so, yeah. Kelly, I want to ask you, how has cannabis helped you? Can you tell us a little bit about your journey with cannabis and healing, since we're already talking about the medicinal benefits? Thanks, Dr. Yeah. And I just wanted to say with what Dr. Carmen was saying there, um, when I, with how cannabis helps with so many different things. So for me, it, um, I started my cannabis healing journey with um, when I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, but I had also been suffering with chronic depression for years and years and years. So when I started taking the oil to heal the cancer, um, and this was back in 2012, so we didn't know any of this stuff. Um, it really took me by surprise just how much better um, I started to feel emotionally um, and mentally. Um, you know, and also I had a lot of anxiety. It was very difficult for me to just even leave the house, um, to be quite honest. I was, you know, in a really bad way. Um, and then I was told that I had cancer. So, <laughs> um, you know, and that's really what I think is so amazing about cannabis is that when I started on my journey, I was, um, I was, I can understand now why I was so ill, but I was in no position to really help myself. I mean, most days I could 
you know, I couldn't get myself out the door. Um, I didn't really have any confidence or any motivation. I was just sort of drowning in despair. And then I felt like it was something simple I could use and um, something that I could incorporate in my life that was within my reach, you know, within my grasp. And within about four weeks, um, I just suddenly started feeling, the, the best way that I can describe it is excitement. And I hadn't realized that I had not felt excitement for so long until I actually started feeling it again. And it was excitement for my future. And so now, even when I, I heal myself of the cancer, I've continued taking it uh, to manage the symptoms of the depression. And I have to tell you, it's, my health has just improved, improved, improved overall. Um, you know, there's not one, besides the depression and the cancer, there's nothing else specifically that I can say that it's actually helped me with, except, um, as Dr. Connor says, obviously, working within the endocannabinoid system, my whole body is just responding positively. And I've seen this happen with so many other people. I call it um, blossoming into health. Because it really is just like oh, people just that. suddenly come alive. <laughs> you know, they really, when they start feeling better, when they start seeing that, you know, after being given so many promises and those promises falling short, to finally be in this front of which many approach um, a little bit cautiously and to have it help them so profoundly, um, it really is a, a, a very big deal. Um, and it really is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about sharing it, um, sharing this information with people is because it's a, a very safe plant. I mean, the toxicity levels of cannabis are very low. It's very difficult to hurt yourself with cannabis. So, you know, you've got a lot of uh, room to play and to err uh, and to, to find what works for you, um, you know, what really works for you. Then I just want to chime in on, on the health as aspects as well, because I've been using cannabis since 2000 and... 18 like consistently and um i am a testament of busting the myth that cannabis makes you lazy or you don't want to do anything where you are demotivated i have been my most creative self since i started using cannabis it has helped me in so many ways i suffer from endometriosis um i have problems with my skin i have eczema and acne and my skin. Beautiful. <laughs> it's the weed. It's the weed. Um, <laughs> so I think that it's something I love what you said about um, blossoming into health. Is that what mm. is that how you said it? Mm. Yeah. That is powerful stuff. Mm. Oh. Since we're talking about you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Dominique. I just wanted to add no, it really um, is an amazing plug. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to the topic of health and cannabis, whereby um, one should also remember that cannabis, even though it supports the body and, and um, helps to treat symptoms, it's also not the silver bullet. And um, when uh, you look at the course of most diseases, if not all, Hippocrates claimed that it is all disease starts in the gut. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> the, the Western science says, no, it's not all disease. It's about 80 to 90% only. But the point is, it's, that's where the party starts. And that includes for mental uh, uh, health as well. So just with that, um, when I do training or when I talk and, and, and think about cannabis and health, it's, it's, it needs to be seen holistic because you can't eat the poison, sugar, processed foods, and, and not have a healthy lifestyle and then expect cannabis to, to also just fix it, you see. So if, if you can just also consider that in terms of addressing your, your ailments, diseases, or where your body is out of balance, mm -hmm. um, definitely look at diet because that is unfortunately a lot where, where our health issues start, especially how food is now being produced. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult to eat clean, 
and mm-hmm. um, and that is also why people get sick and have cancer at the age of 30 and then you wonder why and it's also where you look it's where the, where the food comes from there's there's often a direct link there in terms of all, all research I myself healed my son who is now six but at that time he was three no he was two and a half and we visited five doctors and including specialists and he was sick for four months with uh, digestive issues four months sick went to five doctors including specialists and in six days we balanced it healed him if i may use that or rebalanced him rather maybe better Mm -hmm. um, with food so with with that in mind if you do that with your health you have such a great combo with your cannab- your cannabis or your uh, cannabinoid medicine and 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 good diets you you will achieve a lot thank you for reminding of that of the us of that dominique because mm-hmm. i remember a couple of weeks ago um dr carmen and i had this conversation and she made it very clear that mm-hmm. fix the problem let's find the root first yes. before we put the plaster over the issue or over the wound. Um, I want to talk about the entourage effect. What is the entourage effect? I don't know the answer to this question. So this is the question I'm wa- I was waiting for the answer. <laughs> Well, yeah. it means synergy. I don't know um, what I know. It's, it's, it's the plant that's based um, with all the components. So you have the cannabinoids, the CBD, THC, there's more, there's CBC, CBG, THCA, THCB, there's, there's quite a lot that's being researched and have a lot of health properties. So when you, when you look at the plant as a whole, looking at synergy, that includes the cannabinoids, but also the terpenes. So the terpenes we mentioned about the smell, the aroma, imagine you have something like lavender. We all know lavender, just the smell of it has Mm. a chemical reaction in your body, a a physiologic, Mm. like a chemical reaction. And that's also the terpene profile um, of cannabis, which is about 200, has the same. So together with the aroma and the terpenes and the flavonoids, that is the entourage effect, saying that the plant works better as a whole and not as we are now isolating them, in, in, in the pharmacology. Um, there are also clinical research that was done that it seems that when they use the synthetic version of THC versus the mm. whole plant, it turns out with clinical trials, which was done on humans, that um, the, the people responded better with the full plant medicine versus the synthetic version. And that is, in essence, um, the entourage. I don't know if someone yeah. wants to add to that. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's, it's the, the holistic use of the plant as opposed to what we were talking about in pharmaceuticals, which is isolating extracts. Isolating everything, extracting everything. Speaking mm-hmm. of isolating and, and extracting, I want to have one more question before we get ready for another prize. Okay, next question. Because mm-hmm. we're talking about isolating, we're talking about THC and people wanting to synthesize and extract and do all of these things. What is the difference between isolate, broad, and full spectrum CBD? So, isolate, I'll just explain what I think it is that someone can add. Uh, Isolate would be like one uh, component, like just CBD, for example. Um, Broad spectrum would be like multiple different components. Like we were talking about the entourage effect. So let's just say a couple uh, cannabinoids and a couple uh, terpenes that would be like broad spectrum, meaning that it's not just one, but it's, it's, we kind of getting there, we kind of opening the spectrum a little bit more, but then full spectrum would be entire plant. Yeah. So we go from one end of the spectrum, which is just one thing to broad to full spectrum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then going so forward, full spectrum also, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I just want to say going forward, what we can expect, and this is just by looking at the American markets, this would have to be indicated on the label, for example, if you go for broad spectrum, which will have to stipulate specifically the potency, how much THC, how much CBD, 
and that is sort of um, where that that terms are becoming quite important so that people know what to expect when they they uh, purchase it that there's more than just the oil that there are other ingredients as well yes and also guys you know this thing of not labeling things is becoming a problem especially in the states people are labeling things incorrectly so if you are someone who's watching right now who's in the cannabis space who makes products or is part of any kind of product whether it's skin cbd oil please guys the most important thing about our industry is to maintain integrity because it's still new so this is a, just a personal plea from me can we get another prize <laughs> Yay, time for more price giving. Okay, cool. So I have here um, Tanya Cummins. For you, Tanya, I've got an Earth Shine Prize. This is a CBD snack pack with nut crips, nutris, um, Nutristics, and super hot cacao drink. This is tasty and I nutritious. I hope, you are <laughs> I hope you are happy and I hope you can see, uh, see this. Tanya um, Cummins. I hope I'm saying your surname correctly. Tanya Cummins. Um, and I also just want to say in the slide, please just have a look-see. The um, Foria um, Intimacy Lubricant is on there so you can see what, that, what that's all about because I saw someone also ask the question. Yay. And then the other prize is from Hemporium. These guys are the OGs in the industry. You love their product. They've given a 750 rands gift voucher. And this prize is going to go to Zueli Mkanda. I hope you can see this, Zueli Mkanda, yeah, and I Zueli. hope you're happy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Oh, Zueli says oh. OMG! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, party. Party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Special thank you to the Emporium that for this one. That is awesome. Wow. Well done. Wow. And then another really very, 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 very special prize. This is especially uh, special because this is from one of our guests, oh. um, one of our really very most important um, contacts and women in the industry. This is from Kelly McHugh herself, the cannabis guru. Oh, and as she, as she told you earlier, really uh, uh, touching journey that she's been through mm. with cannabis from uh, being ill, first of all, with cancer and, um, and, and allowing it and allowing ca um, cannabis to, to heal her. She's written a book that's called At Home with, oh, sorry, Kelly. I have it here at home with cannabis. And this is especially autographed by Kelly herself. Thank you very much. Kelly. And this prize is going to go to Renato Afonso. This is going to go to Kelly. Uh, this is going to go to um, Renato Afonso. Yay, Renato. Oh, Yay. I hope Yay. you can see this and I hope you're excited to get into that. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> it was Thank me, guys. You, Amy. Me. Thank you for all the wonderful <laughs> gifts. Amy is the girl with the gifts. The girl <laughs> with the gifts and the girl with the questions soon. You are the girl. Yes, we are going <laughs> for questions with Amy. So these are the questions from <laughs> people who have registered for the webinar, people who are here right now. So, Amy, go for okay. it. So, uh, question number one, this is coming from Chris Anderson. Chris Anderson wants to know, do products help all endocannabinoid issues? Um, sure. I think, I think what Chris is trying to, uh, I'm just going to assume that maybe Chris is trying to find out if, um, if you, any, any oils will help with everything, basically. I hope I understand you correctly. Oh, he says um, do Chris. all, or maybe, Chris, maybe not a, a guy, do all CBD products. Uh, and then the rest of the question. Do, or do they all help with endocannabinoids? Okay, okay, so the question is, do all CBD products help with endocannabinoids? issues. So I think it's important what Dominique said earlier and, and you know this is very important when it comes to using cannabis as medicine and when it comes to using cannabis as something to help promote health and well-being. 
is to really understand that health is not just one thing, it's a multitude of things. Um, and in the same way as cannabis is not just one thing, it's a multitude of things, we can't really expect cannabis to solve all of our problems. But I think, you know, when you, when you mention CBD, CBD, it's very important also where you're getting your CBD products from. Because the other thing is a lot of products out there, as Noxie was saying, are not labeled correctly and they actually don't contain what you really expect them to contain. And so I think it's not only important to remember that, you know, health is, is uh, multifactorial. So we mentioned diet, things like exercise, sleep, stress management, um, and then also making sure that you are supplementing appropriately and that may include cannabis for you. But it's important to make sure that you are getting good quality products as well. Um, and I think just to add there, I think it's quite important to know that even though the benefits are staggering when it comes to cannabis, we have to also remember it's not always the cure, but it is also a way to manage symptoms. So it's, it's not, um, it's, it's really about understanding that CBD would be able, enable you to, to manage a lot of um, symptoms. But it's also important to remember that the endocannabinoid system, it doesn't only respond to CBD, it responds well to THC too. THC does play a very important role, a medicinal role. I know a lot of people think that the THC is purely mm -hmm. regulatory, but when it comes to you know, pain management, uh, certain cancers, uh, uplifting your mood, THC plays a very vital role. Mm -hmm. So I know CBD is sort of touted as the most sort of medicinal and the safe one, but Sometimes you do actually need a full plant extract in order to help bring your body back into balance. And it's 100%. interesting about uh, CBD sorry, and comment. THC. One sorry, this, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I was just oh, letting you know oh. that we are approaching <laughs> the end of the program. <laughs> I was just going to say that it's interesting the relationship between using them yes. at the same time to, or using them together because CBD does have a balancing effect on THC. So it helps to modulate the way THC is actually um, affects, in other words, affects your body. So, yeah. So it's that entourage effect thing again. Use more than one. Option. But it's also it's also we have dosing. another question. Um, dosing though, where you would, for example, let's say have four drops of CBD versus one drop of THC, for example, where. Sure. The, to, to help you maybe get all of the goodness in it, but uh, without the head high, um, if, if that is what you want to avoid. So that's right. also just the, the dosing is then quite important when you choose to use it together or, yeah. Anyway, no, thank you guys. Like <laughs> 100%. Yeah, there's so just we, so much to uh, talk uh, about. Do you want to take a few, sorry, Amy, I just want to um, disclaim, can we have for the next couple of questions, just one answer? Because we okay. are trying to answer as many questions as we can and have as many people have their questions answered. So Amy, please continue. Oh, wait, cool. Please. I actually found this one was really, really very close to my heart as well. All the women in my life want to know about this. Uh, can somebody mention something about cannabis and breastfeeding? This is from Asanda Tondlana. Hmm. So the use of cannabis while breastfeeding. Um, okay, I'll take this one. It's quite a controversial one, obviously, um, but it's important to remember that there are natural um, cannabinoids in breast milk. Um, so earlier, uh, Dr. Carmen was talking about how our bodies sort of mimic um, these cannabinoids. We have these cannabinoids in our body. When you're using cannabis, it is going to go through the breast and the child is going to, um, to receive that. But in all the studies that um, I've read, Top study, they have actually found that cannabis, when again, when controlled tobacco, that cannabis harms the development of the child. Um, so, and see, because you don't want to, you know, the development is so important, especially with people. But I think that if you're using cannabis for a specific reason, um, let's say pain management or sleep or stress or depression, you've got to weigh up what you've been given by your doctor and what um, toxins those drugs would have compared to cannabis. And as I said before, they haven't really been able to show that cannabis um, 
interferes with development. The study was a study of make a study of the wild They showed that the cannabis actually did quite well compared to the things we did. They were able to um, regulate their emotions better, they had uh, better organizational skills, and their carers actually enjoyed caring for them more. Um, so I would say that as a mother, you've got to weigh it up for yourself, whether or not you feel it's safe, um, you know, whether you feel comfortable um, giving it um, potentially more damaging, then I would definitely weigh that. Awesome. But I don't think, personally, I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, well, thank you for that answer, Kelly. Um, Amy, I don't know if you want to do one more question, but we are running out of time. So if we are, we have to make it very quick. Yeah, can I do one? I mean, I don't know. One more question. I would like to ask one more question. Um, this question is from Magdalene um, Devet, and she wants someone to speak about um, cannabis with autism and Asperger's. I, mean, I know this is a super long one. So if anyone can just answer and make it super quick and neat and sweet. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thirty seconds. What was that? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, please. Yeah, I think that I think that with regards to autism, there there has been interesting um, uh, work done on on um, children and people with autism experiencing a benefit in a similar way to what we were talking about earlier about epilepsy and uh, cannabis, but specifically CBD. Um, but interestingly, as Dominique was mentioning earlier about the gut, the link between autism and the gut is like so stark and striking that I think that, you know, using CBD is, is probably going to help, but focusing on gut health as a first port of call is probably going to be even more powerful than just supplementing with, with CBD alone and expecting to see a great result. I think that the gut health in autism is really something that needs to be looked at. So cleaning up that diet, getting rid of toxins, especially to, uh, autistic children uh, generally need to have very, very clean diet and environment. And so I think CBD can be used as a supplement, but important to focus first and foremost, I think, on gut health in autistic children. And, and the pharmacology is now moving into a space where they're going to target diseases, where they're going to say, okay, this oil is specifically for autism ADHD, as an example. Awesome. So I'm going to have to cut you off. I'm so, so sorry. We yeah. are running out of time. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have to thank our sponsors. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us first. Everybody who's here, who watched, who came through, we appreciate it. Thank you to our beautiful guests, our speakers. Jackie isn't here. Thank you to Jackie. 